in any system of conservation laws, uh, you would uh, um, would have a features like that. So you have conserved the variables, and uh, you have flux written as functions, sometimes complicated functions of the conserved variables. All right. Okay. And uh, uh, in, in this case, you instead of uh, having a df du as the conserved uh, uh, as the characteristic speed as we have in previous case, we have df du now as a matrix, right? Because now we have two f's and we have two u's being uh, m and h. So so df du is a matrix and. Uh, uh the the reason the fact that is a, this is a two by two matrix would give you two different eigenvalues of the fdu and the two eigenvalues actually forms two different wave speeds okay so for any system of conservation laws you would uh, simultaneously see several different wave speeds uh happening at the same time Right. For, for a shallow water equation, you may see uh, a wave going towards the right and at the same time another wave going towards the left. And uh, these two waves may collide and uh, pass over each other and things like that. So, so this uh, would be kind of a fascinating things about the systems of uh, uh, conservation laws. You have different wave speeds, different uh, continuities going in different ways. All right. Okay, any questions? I, I know I'm going uh, over this uh, really quickly. This is just going to give you some flavor of uh, what uh, people solve in, in, in real life when, when you use a CFD, computational fluid dynamics uh, software. This is the kind of uh, things uh, we are doing in the background, solving system of, uh, systems of, of conservation laws using the same finite volume methods. Okay, any any questions? Okay, if no, no yeah, question? No questions. Okay. Um, I'm I'm just uh, spending the last uh, few minutes uh, uh, introduce to you how does final volume work in multiple dimensions. We have been looking at a single spatial dimension only in X, right? And uh, um, finite volume actually extends to multiple dimensions extremely easily. In the sense that if we have a, let's say, two dimensional conservation law, if we have a two dimensional conservation law, then we are talking about uh, ddt of u plus dfx of u dx. Okay, plus d f y of u d y equal to zero. So we have f, y, and t, two spatial variables, one time variable. And we have a flux in the x direction, we have a flux in the y direction. And here I want to introduce to you uh, a bit of notation that uh, involves more vector calculus. We want to say this is equal to the divergence of f now as a vector u equal to zero. Are you familiar with this notation? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So here, basically, f as a vector is uh, just the f x and uh, f y. Okay. And now, if I integrate this in two dimensions, in both spatial dimensions. Actually, not only I'm going to inter, uh, integrate over like uh, interval in x and interval in y, we can actually integrate in an arbitrary volume. The arbitrary volume doesn't have to be a rectangle in x and y. This arbitrary volume can be a triangle. It can be a arbitrary, it can really be some arbitrary volume, right? Omega can be something like that. Okay, so if we integrate uh, this thing, uh, we actually got something very interesting. So dx dy. The first term still comes out, uh, the time derivative still comes out. 
we have the total amount of stuff uh, within the volume, right? And that again translates into the average uh, value of the function within the volume pretty easily. So it's basically, let me just uh, say, uh, this is the size, the area of this volume omega times ddt of average function right uh, within the omega so that's that's the first term that's the first term okay how about the second term how about the integral of a divergence does this ring a bell uh, what if i integrate a divergence of a vector within a volume get the vector you get the vector where? You remember something called divergence theorem? Okay, if no, go back and uh, uh, review it. That's something I think of quite important whenever you comes into multi-dimensional calculus. The integral of a divergence is equal to the boundary integral of the vector in the normal direction okay so so this partial omega is actually the boundary it's the partial omega and the n is the unit normal pointing outward okay from the boundary so integral of a divergence is equal to the boundary integral of the normal flux all right Okay, so, so that uh, again uh, links to finite volume very well because uh, now instead of uh, approximating the values of the function or the value of the flux on the grid points, we're gonna be approximating the average value of the flux across these kind of boundaries, right? So imagine I'm discretizing a, a large domain so here's a large domain I'm solving using small finite volumes. So this is a mesh. I can use whatever mesh I want, right? So I can use any kind of uh, volumes. And I have the average of the function here. I have the average of the function here. And in order for me to be able to solve this equation, uh, I already have the average function within the small volumes. And the, what I need is to compute the flux integrated over the boundaries i need to approximate the average flux here i need to approximate the average flux here i need to approximate the average flux here so this is the kind of approximations i need to make in two-dimensional finite volume in three-dimensional finite volume i would be discretizing a three-dimensional domain into small volumes and uh, the same divergence theorem gets me integration over also the boundary of these three dimensional volumes which are small faces across these uh, volumes right then i again i need to approximate uh, the average values of the fluxes that lies in between these small volumes that's how we solve three-dimensional gas dynamic equations for most uh, cfd applications all right, I know this is a very quick uh, introduction of finite volume. Uh, we are going to be moving into finite elements pretty uh, soon in the next uh, lecture. So, uh, yeah, any questions, uh, feel free to ask me in office hours or over, uh, or, or over Piazza. All right. Okay, thank you and uh, see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Hey, and uh, just everybody a reminder to turn in your homeworks they're due today. Yeah, good reminder. Hey, Chi Chi, I missed the first few minutes of lecture, but did you go over how the schedule and syllabus are changing uh, with regards to the rest of the semester? No, I haven't. I I'll send an email out. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.